In this tutorial, we're going to go over formal writing skills. And we're going to get started. So we're going to understand on how to write a letter, that's a formal letter, an application letter, and other examples, how to write a curriculum vitae, a memo, and an agenda, and how to prepare for an interview. And why do we write such types of writings, also just notices? So, starting formal writing. While every thought or idea committed on paper must be done with care, writing considers as formal request as formal requires strict adherence to rules on so as we get to write a formal writing, anything that we can write for formal formal purposes, we need to pay particular attention to the way we are writing the grammar, sentence structure that is complex it and organization, how are we organizing our work. So it is very different when you're writing a letter to a friend, the way you're going to pay attention to it, and the way you are writing a letter for application. So when you're writing to a friend, you don't care what language you get to use, what words you get to use that is in the structure of the words and the complexity, whether you want to use very, very big words or not, to make sure that your friend gets impressed and also how you get to organize your words. You might be repeating one word, you say it again, you repeat the sentence, you say it again. So that is to a friend, but when it comes to formal writing, we need to pay particular attention to everything that we get to write. Because the people you are writing to, if you are applying for a job, they don't have that time, there are a lot of other people have also applied. So they want to see just the many points and you get straight to the point. So formal writing is a form of writing used in the following spheres. We use it in business, in academic and scientific research. The language of formal writing speaks for itself, hence the sentence must be meaningful to the reader. So you don't need to show off that you have got a good vocabulary. Well, it's just now just using very big words. And those start now checking up words for you in the dictionary. So they might not have that time and they might just disregard your application. So that is why it is very important to be just straight to the point and precise, concise. And also to maintain clarity and lucidity. So we need to be so clear as we get to 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 write. And we need to make sure that we elucidate our work. We need to clarify our work. It should be that direct and that clear. And we should avoid slangs. So things which are supposed to be said or written directly, let's just get to write them direct without going in different ways. So arguments or points in support of the writer's or thesis or idea must be relevant and clearly stated. So if you are trying to bring out a certain point that you are supporting, you need to make sure that it is clearly stated. Not you just get to speak, you give your argument or you give your idea and you just end up giving it. You need to give them some that is important. And you are applying for a job and you say someone has died. You need to support that. How are they going to believe someone has really died? That's why you want a job. So point to knock in, uh, to take note of in formal writing. You need to keep it formal. Very, very important because this is formal writing. So formal writing is not transliteration, nor is it a discussion with a friend. So do not contract words as done in text messages and in informal writing, e.g. instead of writing doctor, you get to write doc or dr. And just even the same way I've said e.g., you can't use e.g. in formal writing. Finish the word, for example, not e.g. And instead of writing patient, you get to write pt. Instead of writing CU, you, you get to write abbreviations as if you are writing a text to a friend. These are always supposed to be avoided when you are getting to use formal letters. But there are some, way, some short forms which are highly accepted. You will not, you will not use Mr. You write it in full. This is a accepted way of writing Mr. So you can simply write that instead of you getting to write the word Mr. So, write words in full, express complete thoughts. So, you don't need to end just on the mid when you want to bring out a point. Express it in full. Words must be carefully chosen to convey the intended meaning. Avoid ambiguity. So, don't be ambiguous. Make sure that you what you are bringing out should be highly understood. It should be clear. So, that is to be unambiguous.
should be very clear as you get to bring out points. So use punctuation marks adequately and appropriately. Where it is necessary, use punctuation marks and use them at least adequately and in the right manner, not just anyhow. So we need to get to understand how to use punctuation marks. How to use also quotation marks, commas, full stops. We need to be very careful. Not where we just get to write the whole, the whole letter. I don't know if it is 100 words without any comma and you just get to put a full stop at the end. That is so confusing and it might not be that good when someone is reading. They might not understand what you are trying to bring out. So also avoid imperative tone and the use of second person pronouns. Using such a tone implies that the writer is commanding the reader. So we should, don't, we should avoid using second person pronouns such as me, you. So those should be avoided. At least if you want to use to describe yourself, say I. Okay. And also minimize the use of first person pronouns. So I is a first pron a first person pronoun. So we should also get to avoid using first pro uh, first person pronouns. I want to write about. Rather just say this letter is about instead of I want to write about. So don't mention yourself a lot of times as you get to write a form writing. Also avoid redundance. Do not be repetitive. So you're just bringing the same word again and again. So you're just repeating your point. You put it in this sentence. You write another sentence. There's some meaning as the previous one but you're just changing somewhere. So don't be redundant as you get to write. So just be direct to the point and clarify and support the thesis using paragraphs. So if you have got an idea, make sure that you support it fully using different paragraphs. And each paragraph must maintain a unit thought which coheres with entire work. Opposing arguments must be carefully placed not to distract from the thesis. So as you get to write paragraphs, make sure that one paragraph is bringing one idea out which is clearly stated, not in the same paragraph. You talk of you going to the farm, you talk of someone dying, you talk of you getting to be fired from work. That is ambiguous. So you need to make sure that one paragraph has got one point, one thought clearly brought out. And if you want to put an opposing view, make sure that it is not away from the main idea of that paragraph. Also, topic sentence, uh, sentences to guide each paragraph. What is a topic sentence? So, a topic sentence is the sentence that is m guiding the whole of your, your paragraph. For example, you are writing a letter and you say, it was it was so unlucky that this incident had to happen. I don't know what incident you can mention. Maybe it was so unlucky that she was bashed on the road. So if that is the topic of sentence, make sure that all the ways that you'll be saying will be in regard to the bashing of that person on the road. Not that is the topic, so, uh, topic of sentence and then the words that you are bringing out, you are talking about, you going to the farm. How does that really relate? So you need to make sure that you stick to the topical sentence. And transitions between paragraphs should be smooth, indicating that the writing is a unit of thought. So as you get to move from one paragraph to the next paragraph, make sure that the, the writing is clearly connecting. Ideas are connecting, even if they are different paragraphs, but it shows that you are really going in the same process. So from one idea to the next idea, they get to follow each other. Not you mention one thing and you really mention something that is very different. So you need to make sure that you are always on track. And use capital letters appropriately in proper names, beginning of sentences. So you just don't use capital letters anyhow, unless proper names such as names of animals and humans. And also at the beginning of each sentence, make sure that you get to use a capital letter. And one thing that is very, very much important to be careful of is the use of homonyms. Words that sound the same but have different spellings. And these a lot of times are confused. It's and it's. This one means it is. This one would mean possession. It belongs to new and new. So these have got pro different meanings. So we need to be very careful. Even if the pronunciation is the same, there, there, 
so they might sound the same we need to be very careful because they have different meanings where 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 so how do you just get to to differentiate and two 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 ones ones one 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 so to be very very careful when using these homonyms and also including in text citations and reference lists in research papers so as you get to give some ideas or you want a statement to be support a statement that you are bringing out you need to make sure that you bring out citations and also references that are supporting the statements that you are making just even within the text in text so for example when you have you have narrated a story and you want to bring out a word that someone was saying you need to make sure that you can even bring a citation just cite what someone already said and also proofread and edit every formal text so you need to make sure that you check if the sentences are correct and clear you need to make sure that the points which are necessary are all mentioned that you've not left anything and you need to f make sure that the structure that you've used is all right the spellings they've got no mistakes and make sure that when you are using american english stick to american english when you are using british spellings stick to those for example color and color so this is american this is british most the american there is no you put there so you need to make sure that if you are using that you get to stick to that so this is very very important to stick to okay so many cases and scientific papers cvs which is other name notices of meeting and so generally when you are writing emulator or just some things that we need to get follow. So when but a brief it should have a complete meaning. So you just say who pairs it was eating so um, give it more meaning you can even state what the person was getting to eat so make sure that you end on the middle of a sentence make keep keep it like the mango who planted the tree that is not, not this is you know, keeping it brief and make sure that is so highlight important points also need uh, need to be concentrated on you need and know the readers take any are you writing to someone who is not that much language to write to them not where you use the and also make sure that you get to use the correct into synonyms homonyms and size short paragraphs and sentences and use organized structures they should be well organized the way the language is getting flow the way the events are getting to flow not you move from one event which has no even connection you jump to an in the garden at nine hours in the plane going to to somewhere how is that even connecting from nine hours you are in the garden from ten hours you are so they should be that making you can be that quick person but it should just make sense and as you get to write a formal writing make sure that not using insisting words words which are just not right to use go bananas in a form he was upset So there are some to get into it, and also use some. It's not always.